Hi everyone, my name is Bogdana Veselinovic. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. I'm in the Open Maps team. Uh, most of our team is based in Belgrade in Serbia. Uh, you can see here Vuk is an intern at our team. And this whole project, well, it's been kind of a team project. Most of us have been involved in some part of it, but Vuk is the main uh, developer behind it. I'm, and I flew from Belgrade to present his work, right? So, yeah, uh, the title of the talk is real completion, but we'll get to it at some point. So for the ones who don't know, but I guess most of you do, uh, Microsoft is trying to build a map that's based on open data. So uh, ob obviously, since we are talking of maps and open data, uh, open street maps are uh, one of the main sources that we pull our data from. I think base map and uh, I'm sure that whole road network is taken from WhatsApp, maybe buildings. So part of the buildings. Uh, so that being said, uh, making the OSM data better directly means that we are making our product better for our users and our customers. So we are doing that by uh, making uh, like manual edits in the directly in OSM. And we have our editorial team who is doing really a great job. So we had a lot of we call it editing tasks uh, of adding and correcting data in OSM. We were correcting road classifications, adding turn restrictions, missing road. We recently engaged in an effort of adding signpost data in Australia. So, but uh, all of that editorial work is um, mostly manual work. And uh, it definitely means that there's a lot of space for improvement, right? So we definitely want to speed up that process somehow. And we need uh, some kind of a scaled way to do that. Uh, so that's why I'm here basically, to present you some neat tool or algorithm that we are currently developing. So like I said, the title was road completion. Let's call that a working title. I, first of all, I want to establish a difference between completion and matching. So in general, conflation means that we combine, in this case, map data from two or multiple sources, I mean, depending how good your conflation is, uh, to create a resulting data set that picks up the best from all sources. So the first step in conflation is matching, trying to, fa uh, to find the matched pairs between uh, uh, those two data sets. And that's probably right the most challenging part. So then when you have a match, it's fairly easy to identify where the information is missing from one data set or the disparities between those data sets. So like I said, our uh, whole road network is, uh, we are pulling the whole ne road network from OSM and the algorithm we are working on is focused on road matching. Uh, so, sorry that right so uh, I told you already what is the main idea for working on this kind of a tool well we want to enrich OSM data with some other open source data so there are multiple open source I mean in government data sets there and we want to speed up the our editorial work uh, by uh, focusing uh, strictly on the differences between OSM and other data sets or the places where data, data is missing from OSM. This way we can write, detect and add unmapped roads in OpenStreetMaps, or we can detect name and classification disparities, uh, whatever attributes are present in the other data set that we are matching with, let's say. So this here is I'm not sure how it is clear enough for you. So they, uh, these are road geometries from two data sets. One of them is represented with a solid line. The other one is with dashed line. And this is just to visualize. We can do some kind of a completion by naked eye, right? 
And here we can see that two data sets have diff different representations of the same intersection, or that one data set is actually potentially missing a road, has an unmapped, unmapped road, or here that uh, the, I, I'm guessing this is a parking lot by its structure, but we can see that uh, one data set has a more detailed representation of a parking lot. And this is all great, but we definitely need a faster and a more scalable way to do that on a much larger area than this. Uh, yeah, well, uh, first of all, let's see with uh, what kind of data we, what kind of data we have at our disposal. Well, from uh, all, almost all, right, road data sets have some kind of road geometries. Uh, OSM also has, right, road geometry. He, here it's represented with in well-known text. Also, almost all uh, data sets have some kind of road classification, their own internal hierarchy. In this example here in OSM, this road is classified as primary. Roads have names, right? They have direction of travel. It can be a one-way street. It can be a two-way street. It has some speed attached to it. It can have various types of attributes. So the tool we are developing mostly uses uh, spatial da data and semantic data in the sense of uh, names, uh, direction of travel, uh, and road classification. So we, when we have uh, our results of the matching, there, there can be multiple types of matches, right? We can have a road from one data set that doesn't have a match in the other data set, or it can, have a mat it can be matched with the whole road from another data set, or in general with multiple roads from the other data set, or with parts of roads from the other source. So before we came to our, I wouldn't call it final solutions because it's still like work in progress, but we, we tried various different approaches. Uh, one of them was uh, trying to construct a like road graph network and then somehow conflate it, match it by identifying first some reference points. We call them like that reference points reference points, those were mostly intersections. And we would try to match them between the data sets using geometry, using distance, using topology. And after we find and match those reference points, then we tried uh, matching roads starting from those reference points, also using topology. But that turned out to, to be a bit of a problem uh, because of different modeling. Uh, also, we tried finding all possible paths between those matched reference points and matching roads along those paths, but that was very slow. Uh, at least using the technology we used, it was very slow and it was not scalable enough. So definitely, as you've seen so far, the most difficult problems that arise are due to multiple and inconsistent representations of same real world objects in different data sets. So, here are a couple of examples. As you can see here, uh, the blue lines are the actual geometries of, of the roads. We can see that the one physical road can be differently uh, represented in two data sets. In one of them, it's represented by only using only one geometry. That's probably a two way street. And in the other, it's represented using two road geometries that are one way, that have only one way travel of uh, direction of travel. Also roundabouts, roundabouts are a whole nother thing, right? <laughs> so yeah, this one's actually good. I mean, <laughs> we can see that the geometry on the left has uh, only, let's say one uh, exit and entry ramp, pair of exit and entry ramps, while the other representation has four of them. So finally, the, the solution we came up with so these are like five steps. Well, uh, first of them is that obviously we want to narrow down the set of geometries that we want to even consider as matching. So we need to, let's say we have a source data set and a candidate data set, right? We want to find uh, candidates based on intersecting buffers. We draw buffers around roads. There will be example following. 
So then we want to cut only the relevant parts of those geometries in case only parts of them match. Then we use uh, some geometric similarity metrics to basically discard all bad, bad candidates. And if available, if semantic data is available, then we use it to improve our uh, results. And in the end, we try and handle edge cases. So I'm a visual person. For me, it's much better to visualize stuff, so I guess. Uh, it's much better this way. Uh, this is an example. Let's, uh, the red geometry is our source geometry and from our source data set. Uh, all other geometries are from the candidate data set. So what we do, we draw buffers. I believe they're around five meter wide. Uh, wide. But it doesn't matter that much. So we draw buffers around them and we consider as candidates only uh, the geometries that have intersecting buffers with uh, our source geometry. And this is something that we get for our red geometry. We have, I think there are like four potential candidates. Uh, then we, uh, it's much, we do the same for each one of them, but let's take an example of only one uh, uh, pair. Let's do the green right, the green uh, candidate geometry, we, we only want to compare the relevant part of the green geometry with the red geometry. We don't want to compare the whole green geometry, right? So what we do, we again draw buffers around them and take only the part of the green geometry that's inside the red geometry's buffer and take only the part of red geometry that's inside the green geometry's buffer. That was tough, okay. And the, this is something that we finally get as a potential match, uh, matched pair. To uh, decide if it's a good match or a bad, bad match based solely on ge spatial data, we do some kind of geometric uh, uh, similarity, right? First, we do Hausdorff similarity, Hausdorff distance. Uh, basically, it just uh, calculates the similarity between two different sets of points, and we not, to not get into details. So we normalize that value between zero and one, and basically, the higher the score, the better the match. So you can see some examples here, where those almost parallel uh, geometries have a very high Hausdorff score. Uh, which is great, but it turned out to be not enough because uh, completely orthogonal geometries can have a very, va uh, very high Hausdorff score. So we introduced another metric. We call it angle score. So what we do, we take uh, vectors starting from the beginning of geometry and ending at the other end of the geometry, like so. And then we calculate the angle between them. And in this case, the lower the value, the better the match. So these two metrics we use in combination. And after that, if our data sets have uh, semantic data, we can use it to uh, improve our results. So uh, roads have names, right? So, but as we know, names can vary uh, in a single data set and not to mention multiple data sets. So, for example, street can be re different represented as street or abbreviation ST or a boulevard or uh, ordinal numbers first. So here, before we do any kind of comparison, we first do a uh, name normalization. So you can see an example here of St. Joe's Boulevard in two different uh, data sets. After we normalize it, we get something like this we get the uh, base name and the road type. We do not compare currently the, the road type. I think we just do equality, but we compare the base name. I mean, it, this definitely can be improved. Uh, so we, what we do, we calculate Levenstein distance. It's a fairly simple algorithm. And we also normalize that value, get a score and uh, uh, I'm not sure what, what is the current value of our threshold for that. Uh, the other attribute that we can use is direction of travel. 
Well, that's pretty simple. It just uh, eliminate, eliminates uh, pairs where candidates have completely opposite direction of travel. Uh, and finally, the road classification. Well, like I said, almost every data set has some kind of road classification. And on the left, uh, this uh, uh, you can see the OSM road classification. On the right, it's some imaginary, right? classification hierarchy. So our algorithm has its own internal uh, hierarchy, consists of four levels, and we ba basically map hierarchies of each data set to the values in that our algorithm is using. And we use it to discard pairs where source and candidate geometries have a difference between in classification that's greater than one because it's very highly unlikely that a highway and a residential street should be a, a match. Yeah, so uh, talking about edge cases, well, buffer, when we use buffers, buffers uh, don't go only into width, they also go in, grow into length. So sometimes uh, very short pieces of geometries get caught in the buffer and we basically just discard them if they are too short. Uh, a lot of matching problems that occur are caused by complex intersections. You can see the mess on the bottom uh, picture. Uh, why? Because there are a lot of uh, parallel geometries, a lot of very short geometries. Uh, also, like I said, roundabouts, their modeling is completely uh, different in various data sets. The, oh, in most data sets, there are like uh, split into multiple and very short segments. Also, uh, one problem is that there's not enough labeled or already matched data that we can actually use to train some potential ML models to use for tuning our uh, thresholds, uh, thresholds and parameters. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these are, these are some examples of our results. You can see uh, oh, an example of, of a one-to-one -one match where a road is completely matched to a different road in another data set or a partial match where you can see the red as a source geometry is uh, completely matched with the, the blue one and partially matched with the green and the black ones. Also a segment, a roundabout segment uh, matched and uh, a different modeling where one... Uh, Street is uh, represented using a two-way geometry in one data set and using two one-way geometries in a different data set. So these are the results on a, on a tile that we tried uh, uh, in Sydney. So these are all geometries that found their matching candidates in the other data set based on our current parameters, all the black lines. And we can pinpoint some examples here. Like this one, we can see that uh, potentially there's a missing row there, there in uh, one data set, in the source data set. Or up there, you can see this uh, highway uh, that's almost completely matched, which is very good. I mean, the main focus are high priority roads. But on the other hand, these parts were not matched and we definitely need to investigate why that happened. Uh, this is an example of a complex intersection. You can see that that can be a, a problem. Parts of it are not matched at all. Uh, yeah, there's a roundabout here that's almost completely matched. Only, I believe only one segment is, is missing while here, yeah, we have a complete, complete match of a roundabout, which is, I mean, great success. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I'm not, yeah, this, uh, the whole street here actually is a match. And basically when you have uh, cases like, like these, that uh, usually implies that there's a difference in uh, the semantic data. I believe in this case, the difference is in road classification, this particular case. So yeah, like I said, uh, we are still working on this. It's uh, like uh, in the development phase. So we still need to adjust the values for our parameters to 
uh, tune them. We are looking into possible ML applications, but like I said, we do not have enough labeled data. So yeah, we are still explore exploring, figuring out ways how to resolve edge cases, maybe try completely uh, different approaches to resolve them, maybe try using the road graph uh, approach that I talked about uh, on, the on these smaller areas where edge cases happen. Also, we can do maybe some kind of post-processing or include even more at attributes if they are available in, uh, in the other data set. Yep. Well, that's it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>